Hey everyone, it's Ross. I'm gonna give you guys a quick update on the fall garden, um, what the summer garden is kind of looking like. We have corn here that we planted very late, very late crop of corn. I can't figure corn out, guys. I really just can't. I don't know what I'm doing with this stuff. For some reason, my corn doesn't get nearly as large as I've seen uh, like nearby farms. Um, <laughs> you know, like most people's corn gets quite large and vigorous and mine doesn't. Maybe I don't have enough nitrogen in the soil. I seriously doubt it, but I think the soil here is perfect. We amended this super well. I even put down new compost. I put down fertilizer. I don't get it, but uh, the corn has been just a huge disappointment. Maybe it's the variety, the genetics that I'm using, I'm using heirloom varieties. Maybe I should just go with a hybrid. You can see here, the corn's pretty much ready and you know it's ready when these tassels here turn brown and all of them turn brown. Um, but the issue I'm getting is that I'm not getting good pollination. Um, also, because it's been quite wet, a lot of this is now getting sort of moldy, some of this. Yeah, this one I, I probably could have picked a bit earlier, but uh, we're getting some like bug damage, some mold damage. It's just been very strange. I can't really understand it. This corn is just a giant disappointment. And yeah, it looks a bit thin over here, but it was much thicker because I had pulled some out um, after they had fruited. Uh, but, you know, some of these just are very, very disappointing. And I, I, if anyone has any idea what I should do, maybe I should just say, you know, forget about the hybrids or forget about the heirloom corn and just go with a hybrid. Uh, really pack it in densely and I could succeed but uh, I don't know what I will say about this corn here guys is that it is extremely sweet and you don't even have to cook it uh, it's incredible um, if I take a bite out of this right now I'll take a bite out of this for you guys it's extremely good it's almost like nonsense how good it is um, I've never had corn like that. Jersey corn ain't got crap on the corn that I grow. However, <laughs> the Jersey corn is huge <laughs> and it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's pollinated. So I don't know, but here we go. So this is the tomatoes. Let's talk about those for a bit. I haven't really been eating many tomatoes as of late. What I've been doing is harvesting them, them all. And I've been bringing them in for sauce and uh, I'll make paste out of them. I will say though, this is the best cherry tomato I've ever eaten. And this is a black cherry. We're gonna keep the black cherry next year and in future years, this is the only cherry tomato that I'm ever gonna grow again, I think. This one beats everything. It really does taste like a beef steak rather than a cherry tomato. And it's like a beef steak in a small size. That's really awesome. We also have some down here that are kind of getting some blossom end rot that I've just been kind of throwing down on the ground. Um, some of these are still ripening, even though we're, uh, we're around October 10th right now. This is around October 15th is really when everything just stops in the tomato world, but we're going strong. And uh, I got a number of these vines still producing pretty well. This one here is probably pickable here. I think this is Green Giant. Or maybe this is a black crim, and maybe I should wait. I have to check it out. We have some, I think this is, uh, this is Riccio or Grossi from my buddy Joe back in here. It doesn't look ready just yet. But this is normally what happens with these tomato vines is that they put out a lot of fruit continuously. And there's a section, I keep tripping here, guys. <laughs> there's a section of the summer where it's just too warm and the flowers on the tomato vines they don't get pollinated because it's just too hot and there's a pause as a result between the first crop and the second crop but the second crop comes in almost as heavy as the first crop and it goes continuously until it's just too cold for these tomatoes to really do anything anymore which is usually around you know basically halfway through uh, October and then sometime in November 1st, we get that frost that comes in 
and ruins everything. But you can see, I mean, look how much on this variety there is. This is, I think, my buddy Joe's, one of his tomatoes. But I've really been enjoying these for paste. The big winner out of all the tomatoes for paste was the orange banana. What a producer. Harvested more off of that than anything. The alpaca is kind of a disappointment. Some of Joe's tomatoes did really well. We had some that just straight up died to, unfortunately, too much aphids. And I never got the aphids off because I thought the ladybugs would come in. That was a bit of a disappointment. Um, here on the, what are these things called here, guys? <laughs> the artichokes. We're finally getting some flowers. And these are, these are young artichokes. These are the green globe variety that has been said to survive even zone six. So I'm trying to grow perennial artichokes here. Um, and I've got four different plants. And I think this is the only one thus far that is fruiting. Yep, or is flowering, but this is the first year. I'm not too worried about it. Excuse me, guys, what we're gonna do, I'll harvest this for sure and any of them that that flower from now until frost. But what the goal is, is we're gonna chop them all back, probably. I think I may leave one or two of them open, but we'll chop a couple of them back and then we'll cover them with, with mulch. And um, it's pretty simple. And then if I bring you guys over here, this is the big one that everybody wants to see, I think. This is the sugar cane here, guys. And you can see it's really doing well. And it's finally looking like sugar cane. You can see it down in there where the, there's like these brackets. Um, the formation of what looks like cuttings. Um, you even have some new shoots coming from the base that I'm sure I'll be able to harvest as well. But I'm just gonna, again, do the same thing with the artichokes, is chop it all back at the very last date of the season. This will be like the last thing I eat. It's quite tall, by the way. It's probably eight, eight or nine feet tall. And I'll chop it back the very, and this will be the last thing I harvest, and we'll cover it. That's it. Covering it at the base, and it will survive. And this will be a perennial food source here of sugarcane in Pennsylvania, and it only will get better. Um, you know, this is just rooted from cutting this year. So it's probably not at the state that is perfect for maybe this length of season that's gone by, right? I sure, in the, I'm sure in the future I'm gonna have more of this. Um, <laughs> like more of this that's not only, I'm probably gonna have brackets, let's say, or cuttings all the way up to here, you know? And I don't know if that really matters in terms of harvesting this, because I'm sure I can use this, right? It's not really that tall this piece down here, these newer shoots, but I'm sure I can use that, right? I'm sure there'll be some, uh, some nice sugar cane juice that I can, cut, I can get out of all of this. So um, for the first year, not bad at all. And I'm gonna come back to you guys when we harvest that, show you guys what's going on. Not a big deal, but that's mostly what's going on in the summer garden. That's really just at its end for the most part. Uh, we have the winter garden over here which has been a huge disappointment because I put down a lot of seed and a lot of it got killed or didn't come up. I think maybe because it was too dry. We have lots of arugula, which is great to see. And I still have all this bok choy, which is so good um, that we can harvest in the future. Um, I have a little bit of carrots, not a whole lot. But the goal here was to create this box and this is gonna be a cold frame. And I still, have to, I still haven't figured out the exact specifications of this box, but I've got myself wood and I have myself greenhouse plastic in here. And I can throw this greenhouse plastic over top of this and create a, a cold frame. And that way I can grow arugula. That's my goal is to grow arugula more than anything else all winter long. Um, and even into the spring as far as I can go. But I need to figure out kind of this whole issue here is that I want the, the cold frame on an angle to really get as much sunlight and heat in here as possible 
So I need to shave off the sides of this with the saws. I need to shave off this so that it goes up on an angle up to here so that I can have this on a downward angle. And then I need to somehow put this on a frame, put the plastic on a frame that I can then maybe even have on a hinge. Is uh, I could probably come in here with the hinge and blow it up this way maybe and so that it will lay flat or lay on an angle this way so I can just open this up and access it whenever I want or maybe I'll just have to keep the plastic over top of it and tie it down with something and then when I want to access it just untie it and I can come in here and, and open it up I'm not entirely sure how I want to do that but there's so many things out there on these cold frames um, that I'm sure I can figure out something good. This section here is going to be dedicated to our garlic, which is going to happen very, very soon. So when that happens around October 15th, I'm planting it. I have all the garlic ready to go from the garlic that I grew, from the garlic that um, I actually purchased some sea garlic again this year, just so I can make sure that I have the largest cloves possible. Um, and this is where we're, we're going to grow garlic all along this strip here. It's a lot of land. I'm going to have a ton of garlic. I love my garlic. We're going to have a couple varieties in here, but mostly music is the only one that I really am uh, I'm settling on. Um, and that's kind of it. We also have, I just want to show you, I just noticed we have some of the Egyptian walking onions coming up again. And this is good stuff here for green onions if I wanted to use it. And I'm kind of just in that garden mode, starting to get into that garden mode because that's kind of all that's left. The, uh, the muscadine grapes, they're not doing a whole lot because it's, they're young, but they, they would be putting out fruit at this time of the year. There is a couple grapes on here. So maybe I'll do a, a uh, video on this in just a minute. But other fall fruits, like my persimmons and my apples here, my apples look very vacant. They look bare. Like they're, they're almost ready to go dormant. Um, but I think it's just due to disease. But these guys are not fruiting all that much this year. And my persimmons, like I said, and the kiwi vine isn't doing anything this year. It's just too young. So a lot of my fall fruits are not doing much. So it's up to kind of the garden to really make up for all this loss here um, or all this lack of abundance you can see some persimmons down in here this one's getting soft Ooh. Um, but yeah even the pears guys the asian pears and the european pears some kind of not really getting many this year but next year and uh, we'll get this whole thing sorted out and it'll be good um, I really like this area here for a fall and winter garden and a spring garden. This is like the best spot. Uh, I kind of don't like the fact that this is going to be with garlic because it's a bit shadier here, but it is what it is. Uh, we're going to get this stuff planted out and we'll talk about it as we do it. And uh, I'll catch you all soon. All right, guys. Take care.